Well, hello everybody and welcome to the first Uthio game review of the 2021-2022 season. I hope all of you will share this journey of myself reviewing these games from start to finish, from game 1 to game 82. Uh, I'm going to do as many of them as I can. Obviously there are some later games and you know stuff like that, but I will try to get those in as well this year. So last night the Ottawa Senators win a 3-2 thriller over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, it was their home opener. Yes, there was lots of Leaf fans there, but nonetheless, the Sens come out on top. But I just want to touch on the amount of Leafs fans and Sens fans at yesterday's game. Uh, the last few years, it's been very bad in favor of the Leafs as far as them invading the Sens arena. It's usually like 85 to 12 to 15 percent for the Leafs. I would have to say. Um, yesterday, it was probably more of a 50-50 split, if not a little more in favor of Ottawa. I mean, yes, it was pretty loud when Toronto scored, but with that being said, that's the most Sens fans I've seen come in and fill the Canadian Tire Centre when the Leafs come to town in a long time. Today, the big news was Brady Kachuk signing. Uh, I think that was very encouraging for the Ottawa Senators organization. And the puck drops on this one and the game's underway. And I thought the Sens came out really good. I mean, usually I find the team that is having their home opener is kind of sluggish to start, much like Toronto was Wednesday night against Montreal, just because there's all that fanfare and, you know, you're getting introduced and coming out onto the ice, there's all that emotion. And then you don't really seem to have your legs for the first 10 minutes or whatever. That wasn't the case with Ottawa, though. I thought they were on Toronto. They didn't get a lot of grade A scoring chances to start the game, but they were out shooting the Leafs 8-2, to and they had the puck a lot more than Toronto did in that first 10 minutes. All that puck possession would lead to a Chris Tierney goal, 8:31 into the first period. His first of the season, assisted by Holden and Tyler Ennis. Holden has one more point than Evgeny Dadnoff to start the season, so that was a great trip for Ottawa. They've already won it. There's no doubt about it. That's not even up for debate. There's some controversy on this tyranny goal. I mean, I kind of thought he kicked it in. A lot of people were saying that, especially if you were a Leafs fan. I'm sure you definitely thought that. I kind of thought so myself, but I mean, you could look at the Chandler Stevenson goal against Seattle on Tuesday night and say, well, it kind of looked like he kicked that one in as well. I guess that's how they're calling it now. They're going to call those goals. Uh, as a Sens fan, obviously I will take it though, I'm not going to complain too much about it, although I did think uh, it kind of looked like a kicking motion from Tierney. It is 1-0 Sens though, nonetheless the goal does stand. I thought after the 10 minute mark of the first period, the Leafs did really get playing and they got their skating legs, they found their skating legs, and they really went after Ottawa. Anton Forsberg, who was the starter on this one, Peter Morazic was the starter for Toronto. Uh, he was great, Forsberg, for Ottawa. I mean, unbelievable. He's in net because Matt Murray has an illness, non-COVID related illness, but nonetheless, he is out. So Forsberg has to come in and he was brilliant. Like I said, he made a lot of big saves, especially when Toronto really came on with a push in that first period. And the Leafs had a power play in that first period and Anton Forsberg would absolutely rob Michael Bunting. Uh, when the Leafs passed it over, I forget who it was who passed it to Bunting. Uh, he had a wide open net it looked like, but Forsberg came across and made the save. That was unbelievable. And then the Sens would get a power play on a Wayne Simmons penalty, and that would set the stage for Tyler Ennis to score his first of the season, uh, his second point of the game already to this point. Uh, that comes with a minute and two seconds left in the first period. Thomas Shabbat and Tim Stutzel would pick up the assists on that goal. And the Sens, their power play, well, you know, it hasn't looked great the last few years, but that was definitely a good start to see them score on their first opportunity of the season. And then with one second left, actually 0.6 seconds to be precise, Alex Formington would score his first of the season. Uh, it was kind of a, a knuckle puck. He slapped it towards the net. Peter Morazic, maybe he would want to have that one back. I don't know. It was a nice pass by Victor Mete, though, to give him that puck and to give Formington the chance to get it on goal and then ultimately score the goal. There was no scoring in the second period, but I thought Ottawa, they got off to a rough start the first five to seven minutes, I want to say, but then they had a power play of their own, and that really seemed to get them back in the game. Uh, then they were all over Toronto. I believe the Leafs only had one shot in the second period after like 12 minutes left or something like that. So Ottawa did a really good job of containing them in the second period. But Forsberg would have to make a breakaway save on, again, Michael Bunting as Victor Mete 
uh, was kind of dancing around with the puck at the blue line. He turns it over, Bunting's in all alone on a breakaway. He goes forehand, backhand, Forsberg stands tall and makes the save. Then we go to the third period and Ottawa is not starting off this one very good. You can tell the Leafs were very determined to get back in this game. And they would get a little bit of help as the Sens would take a penalty and put them on the power play early on in the third. And 3-11 into the third period, that would lead to former Ottawa Senator Jason Spezza scoring his first of the season on a vintage slap shot by him. Uh, he had a few chances like that. He was slapping it towards the net. Forsberg was making good saves there. But ultimately, you give a guy like Spezza, even though he is, I believe, 38 years old, he's still got it in him. He's still got that wicked shot and he makes the sense pay here, it's now 3-1. Goal was assisted by Morgan Riley and William Nylander. And speaking of William Nylander, the Leafs would get another power play shortly thereafter, and 8.50 into the third period, William Nylander snipes on Anton Forsberg after receiving a great pass from Jason Spezza. I would have liked to have seen the Sens have, you know, a better gap control there. Well, not really gap control, because you're killing a penalty, but I don't know, block off the middle of the ice a little bit better, I guess is what I'm trying to say. This go to the aforementioned Jason Spezza and John Tavares. Just want to say William Nylander, I mean, this guy has gotten a lot of flack from Leaf fans over the years, but I think he really won over a lot of Toronto fans with his playoff performance last year and the way he's performed through the first two games this season as well. I see this being a year where William Nylander really breaks out. He did have 30 goals, I believe, a couple of years ago. Uh, but with the way he shoots the puck, I could really see him being a 35-plus goal scorer. I would never rule that out. I probably should mention, too, that Peter Morazic did get injured at the end of that second period. It was an innocent-looking play. Victor Mete took a shot at the end of the second, right at the end as the horn was going. And Morazic, he kind of stretches out. Maybe he injured his groin. It looked like it was his groin. He needs some help getting off the ice. But hopefully he'll be okay and get back for Toronto soon. And then the Leafs would pull the goalie eventually after some really good work by Ottawa to not really allow them to pull the goalie by keeping it in their zone. And then John Tavares would take a penalty. When I first saw it, I thought, yeah, that's definitely a penalty. He hooked Connor Brown going for the empty net. But when I looked at it again this morning, I was like, uh, that looked like more of a stick lift for me than anything else. Now, much like the Tierney goal, I'm not going to complain about this. I didn't really want to see Toronto have another man advantage with them pulling the goalie considering how dangerous they are with the man advantage and that they scored on their previous two man advantages against Ottawa in this game. But if you're a Leafs fan, I can definitely see why you would have been upset about that call for sure. So it's a sense power play with under a minute left. Uh, the Leafs would pull Jack Campbell to even things up, make it 5-on-5, five five, and they would actually get a really great A scoring chance with like 4 seconds left. Morgan Riley all alone in the slot. Uh, he shoots it wide, thankfully he misses the net there, and the Ottawa Senators hang on to win 3-2 over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Anton Forsberg, I mean, you know, hence the title of this video, what can I say about the guy? He was outstanding, uh, he comes in as a guy who's on a cheap one-year deal, heck, he was picked off waivers last year, nobody wanted him. And now he's proving everybody wrong, and it's great to see. One player I really want to point out who did not get on the score sheet and did not even play 10 minutes was Parker Kelly. I thought this guy was very noticeable despite not playing a lot. He was hounding the puck, he created scoring chances, and he just looked dangerous all night, I thought. Final shots in this one were 48 to 36 for the Leafs. Uh, not thrilled about the Sens giving up 48 shots, although that was kind of skewed a bit considering Toronto had 8 on 1 power play, I believe. The Leafs were 2 for 5 with the power play and the Sens were 1 for 4 with their power play. It is, those are my thoughts on the Ottawa Senators home opener victory against the Toronto Maple Leafs. They'll meet the Leafs again in Toronto tomorrow night uh, for a rematch. I'm excited to see how that goes. I hope the Sens can play well on the road this year. But let me know what you all think in the comment section down below. Also, please like and subscribe and share this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.